Enough. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Please, can you say hello to your neighbor on the right and on your left and welcome them to church? I want you to introduce yourself to them. Tell them what your name is and what you do. This is the family of believers, so we should get used to knowing who is sitting down beside us. Hallelujah. So say hello to them. Say welcome to church. Tell them they're looking good. Compliment them before you sit down. If you've not heard your neighbor's name, don't sit down. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Please, you may have your seat in God's presence. Hallelujah. Welcome to church this wonderful Sunday afternoon, the first Sunday in the month of April. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God has seen us through January, February, March, and now we're in Q2 in the month of April. And for those that are watching online, you are welcome to church also. We had glorious services earlier, and this is the fourth service. And I'm biased about this service because this is the best service. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that the glory of the latter will surpass the former. So we are very expectant that in this service that we are going to be tremendously blessed in Jesus' name. And for those watching online, you will also be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. This morning, we're going to be talking about emotional healing. It's a powerful, powerful series that we just started in this month of April. The first few services were mind-blowing, and I know that this service that we're also in is going to be an amazing time. We're going to see people's burdens lifted. We're going to see people, you know, deal with whatever issues and challenges they've been facing for such a long time, whatever traumatic experience you've been through. Today is the last day you're going to go through it in Jesus' name. Amen. So please be expectant, focus, pay attention, and just let God do his work in you today in Jesus' name. Amen. And I also want to implore you that you should do something for us in this week that we're going into. We're this week, we're doing every, every Monday to Friday, we do what we call NLP. Hallelujah. Someone say NLP. NLP. We, are, we are employing you that this week, please invite somebody. Make it a duty. Say, you know what? I want to do something for this next level prayer. I want to invite somebody. So I want you to make sure that this week, you invite at least one person or five. In fact, make it five people. Challenge yourself and say, this week, I'll invite five people. This is a new month. This is a new quarter. This is my own seed that I'm sowing for NLP. I'm inviting five people to attend Next Level Prayer. And what is going to happen, you're going to see their lives change and transform in Jesus' name. I want to tell you that I can proudly boast 
in God, in what God is doing through Next Level Prayer. There has been too many, too many testimonies for us to know that this is not a fluke. This is truly the hand of God. And we are asking you that invite people on all our social media handles. We can do it on Mixlr. We can do it on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube. Please invite them to join us for Next Level Prayer every Monday to Friday at 6.30 a.m. in the morning. Hallelujah. I saw I'm going to do that this week. Are you going to challenge yourself? I want to see your hands up if you're going to challenge yourself and invite five people. No, not the people finding themselves. I want to see your hands up for those that are going to invite five people. Thank you very much, my brother. The graduates are going to do that. Glory to God. And of course, we have people that graduated from the foundation school and we're going to be doing their graduation today. Can we put our hands together for them? Be committed and, there, and here they are to begin to, to, um, to do their graduation. Hallelujah. So this morning, or rather this afternoon, I want you to sit back, I want you to relax, I want you to focus, I want you to pay attention because God has something in store for you. And I declare that after today, you will be grateful and glad that you came for service in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please fix your eyes on the screen for some more announcements. You more investors, welcome to the announcement session. Next Level Prayers continues this week. The direction for the week are April 8th, it's time to move up. April 9th, I move up. April 10th, communion, healing and intervention. April 11th, I move up. April 12th, my family and I move up. Join the prayers from Monday to Friday by 6.30 a.m. Have you registered for the NLP conferences coming up this year in Canada, USA and London? If you haven't, send the code showing on the screen. Do you have family and friends in the UK, Canada and USA that you would love to invite for NLP conferences, then this is the perfect time to invite them. Kindly scan the QR code to get them invited. Would you like to be a part of the great happenings at Harvesters? Then join our Growth Track Step 2 themed Discover Your Design. Scan the barcode on the screen to register. In today's session, you will discover your spiritual gifts and personality types and how you can maximize them. This second class holds right after the service. Don't miss it. The marriage preparation course is ongoing and you can still join and learn how you you can lead a successful and thriving marriage. Kindly scan the barcode on the screen to register. Harvester Skill Acquisition Program HSAP will hold in Ada, Bagada, Ikorodu, Alimosho, Ibadan, and Abuja on the 16th to 19th of April 2024. Registration is currently ongoing and you can register at your campus. Are you age 20 to 28 and ready to make a difference? Register for the next batch of the Harvester's International Internship Training Program. said we should do. He said we should call upon him and he will answer. Hallelujah. And that's what we're about to do this glorious Sunday afternoon. We're going to call on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But first of all, we're going to start in the place of, place of thanksgiving. And I'd like to read from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 18. And it says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Hallelujah. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus that we should give thanks. I want us to lift up our voices this morning. And in your own words, begin to thank God. Begin to thank him for the months of January, February, March, and now the month of April. I want you to lift up your voice and say, Father, thank you for all the good things you've done for me. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the gift of life. Thank you, Father, for the gift of health. Thank you for the gift of provision. Thank you because you provide for my every need. Thank him for divine protection because every day you go out and you come back home safe and sound. Can you lift up your voice and begin to think back from the beginning of the year till today how God has saved you, how God has helped you, how God has made you progress this year. Can you lift up your voice and begin to speak and begin to say thank you mighty Father. Lord, I am grateful for all that you have done for me. I am grateful for all that you do for me. Can you thank him for answered prayers? Uh, between January and now, I can imagine how many of your prayers that he has answered. I want you to use your own voice this morning and thank him and thank him. Man, those so talk if you have a prayer language, you can also lift it up in the place of thanksgiving. Thank you, Right. 
Jesus' name we'll pray. And in Jesus' name we'll pray. I'm also going to be praying for our next level conference that is coming up in the UK. Hallelujah. We're going to be spending time to pray along and pray for the event. And I'm going to read from the book of Acts chapter 4 verses 29 to 30. And it says, that, Now Lord, look on, thy, on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to pray that God will stretch forth his hand and bless this event that we're about to do. We're going to pray that God stretch forth his hand and he's going to heal every form of sickness that is going to arise before that time in the name of Jesus. We're going to pray for approvals. We're going to pray for breakthroughs. We're going to pray for deliverance. Can we lift up our voices as we pray for next level conference? We're going to pray for the organization of the conference that everything goes according to plan. In the name of Jesus, we're going to pray. That the city of the United Kingdom will be filled with the Spirit of God. That everyone that steps into that atmosphere, hey, will live with their testimony. In the name of Jesus, we are going to pray for all those that we have invited, everyone that we have sent out the flyers to, that they will attend this, they will attend this conference, and they will live with their testimony. In the name of Jesus, we are going to pray for approvals. We're going to pray for promotions. We're going to pray for jobs. We're going to pray for pregnancies, fruit of the womb. We're going to pray for funding approvals. We're going to pray for emotional healing. We're going to pray for every form of healing as required. We're going to pray for people to be delivered from every form of affliction. The Bible says that many are the affliction the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from it all. Rakatea Boroboska. Oh, we're going to be praying that the glory of the latter will surpass the former. This next level conference will be ten times better than last year's own. In the name of Jesus, can we lift up our voices and pray? Father, let that be a mighty move of your spirit at our conference this year. Let go proper to every form of sickness, every form of cancer, every form of we declare live Rakata will be destroyed by the power of the Holy Ghost in the mighty name of Jesus. Rekete Kombo Roko Tosede Rababako Roko Tosha. We declare people will be delivered from every form of affliction, every addiction that they are going through in the name of Jesus Christ. Rateka Dosa Amande Roko Tonde Balea. Lord, we are trusting you for an avalanche of testimonies. Eto Roko Tosha Gerede. Because we know that you love us. Ayaba Robos Kobo Robo Bosa Kababa. Thank you, mighty Father. For in Jesus' name we we'll pray. Amen. And finally, we're just going to be praying for this service and for emotional healing. Hallelujah. And we're going to pray from the book of Psalm 147 and verse 3. Psalm 147 in verse 3. And it says, He healed the broken in heart. Hallelujah. He healed the broken in heart and binded up their wounds. Glory to God. He healed, he healed the broken in heart and binded up their wounds. We're going to be praying for everyone that is going through some form of emotional trauma. That in the course of this service, the peace of God that passes understanding will flood their hearts in the name of Jesus. We're going to pray for people that the ability to forgive will rest upon them mightily in the name of Jesus. Those who have been hurt, those who have been wounded, those who are in pain, we're going to ask God to take away that pain today in the name of Jesus Christ. Those that are even struggling to forgive themselves, that God will give them the strength to forgive themselves in the name of Jesus. Can we look up our voices and begin to pray this morning? Our Heavenly Father, we are praying for everyone here that they listen to your message. That you will touch their heart, that you will heal their pain, Rapa Komoro, that you will bind up their wounds, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, everywhere they are hurt, everywhere there is pain, Rapa Komoro, Bosa, everyone struggling with a broken heart, Father, heal them this afternoon, Lord. Reko Tosa, Nebra, Kata, Moro, Bosa, stretch your loving arms around them, Napa Roko Tosa, Kere, Roko Tosa, Moro, Bosa, oh, give them the capacity to forgive those who are struggling with malice, those who are struggling with.
pray. For everyone that believes that God has answered their prayer, I shout a powerful hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Please, you may have your seat in God's presence. Hallelujah. Can okay, you put your hands together so, with me as we welcome our campus pastor, Pastor Balaji John. Hallelujah. Please, let's put those hands together for her. Isn't she looking great? Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Or brothers and sisters. Which one are we used to? Brothers and sisters. Good afternoon. How are we doing? How are we doing? Fantastic. We're going to spend the next five, seven minutes to celebrate and acknowledge some phenomenal gentlemen, um, leaders in our midst. And so to this afternoon, we're having our graduation ceremony for our foundation course students. Please, can you put your hands together for them? This group of people who have given themselves to the word of God, to prayers, and to studying and teach and learning at the feet of God. And so, very quickly, um, we like to celebrate them and pray with them and send them forth in the power of God. Hallelujah. All right, dear graduates, how are we doing? How's the classes been? Fantastic. All right. Um, very quickly, I want to congratulate you. I think you need to put your hands together for yourselves. I know that about 100 of you started and 32 of you finished. Please put your hands together for yourselves. Today marks uh, a big day for you in your spiritual work and journey with Christ. I hope that you are proud of yourselves. Some people always start the year saying that they want to know God, they want to do something for, for God, they want to you know, go deeper in the things of God, but they're not able to, but you're able to, so you need to be proud of yourself and celebrate yourself. Say, you know, put your hands together for, church, please, can you help me celebrate them for their consistency? Well done. So this afternoon, I'd like to charge you as you go forth from the book of John 15. If you can please put on the NIV version, it would be great. I want to charge you from John 15, the NIV version. Scripture says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. Verse 4, is it up, please? All right, fantastic. John 15, NIV version, I mean, the first verse. Jesus was saying that I am the true vine. He says, and my father is the gardener. Verse 2 says, he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes or he decorates. My first charge to you is in verse 4. He says, remain in me all, as I also remain in you. So my first charge to you is, even as you go off the foundation course, I want to charge you, challenge you to remain in God. And so sometimes, you know, because you're a student of a school and you know that you have to, you know, study the word at this time, send in your assignments, take your prayers, and now the structure is no longer there. But Jesus is saying to you this morning, he says, remain, you know, remain. Remain is that constant. You are found in his presence and found in his word. He said, remain in me. Don't, don't go and come. Hallelujah. It says remain in me. So I want to encourage you that as you go off, you know, doing exploits for the things of the kingdom, remain in Christ. Hallelujah. My second charge to you is in verse 16. It says, you know, Jesus was saying that you did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. Not just bearing fruit, but your, your fruit will last. Hallelujah. And so, the reason why there is a planting, why you are planted in the courts of God, is so that you can bear fruit. You know, you cannot um, be planted and not bear fruit. It says, I will cut you off. And I don't know how many of you are here serving God, but the reason why you are constant, constantly be, being filled with the fullness of God is so that you can bear fruit. And so, as you go forth, let your community know that there is now a fruit-bearing person here. Let your family members know that I have, I have gone through a course. I have been 
Firmly rooted in God. Now I am here to bear fruit. You bear fruit in your service. You bear fruit with the words of your mouth. You know, everyone will, around you will understand that light has come. Hallelujah. It says that you are the light of the world. And so you're going forth serving God and influencing God. Hallelujah. You're influencing the culture. You're influencing everyone that you see around you. Amen. And then the third, my third charge to you is seek growth. For you to constantly bear fruit, you need to grow. And so the moment you stop growing, apparently you start dying. And so as you've done foundation school, there's still many more courses. There's a basic leadership course. There is the small group leaders course. You know, there is Harvesters YouTube where you plug your ears to and you keep growing. Hallelujah. And so I want to challenge you that keep growing. Don't stop growing. You know, growing never stops. And then the last thing is that persevere in faith. You know, I used, when I was a younger Christian, I'm still a younger Christian, I used to wonder that why do I have persecution when I finish something like wine press, you know. But then I found in my Bible that persecution comes for the word's sake. And so now that you've heard the word and you're firmly rooted in God, persecution will come. But then the scripture says that be of good cheer. Hallelujah. Because I have overcome. Hallelujah. And so while persecution will come and the things you are saying, ah, God, but I have not done foundation school. I'm challenging you that even as the persecution comes, tell the devil, well done, I know. But guess what? I am an overcomer. Hallelujah. Because the word of God says whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And I know that you would overcome in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Church, can we please pray for them as they rise to their feet? We'd like to pray for you. Please stretch forth your hands and, and lift them up in their prayers. We're going to pray from them from the book of Ephesians 1 verse 17. Hallelujah. Can I please have it on the screen? Ephesians 1 verse 17. We call this in the ministry... We call it the Pauline prayers. This is the prayer that Paul prayed to people like you that were going for doing exploits. And then he said, you know, he was asking God, the glorious father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you may grow in the knowledge of God. Can we make that their prayer this morning? Let's pray for them that they will grow in wisdom. In the name of Jesus. If you are kind enough, please stretch forth your hands and lend them your prayers. Yes, Lord, that you will grant them the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom. They will know what to do part time. The Bible talks about Jesus. That Jesus knew what to do part time. Lord, we commit your children to your hands. These ones will know what to do part time. You will give them a working strategy in the name of Jesus. You will have insight. The Lord will open the eyes of your understanding in the name of Jesus. You will begin to know to do in the name of Jesus. So I pray for you that you put your hands on the plow. You will not look back in the name of Jesus. Can we pray for their preservation of their soul? These ones, they will not look back in the name of Jesus. I will declare that no condemnation, no voice that rises against them will stand in the name of Jesus. This one will be preserved in God. Pray for them that they will grow in the love of Christ in the name of Jesus. They will grow in the love of Christ. They will never get to a place where they doubt God's love for them in the name of Jesus, Shanto Brados, I pray for you that the work of God in your life will multiply. The work of God in your hands will multiply. It will not die. It will multiply. In the name of Jesus, your heart will be open to the instructions of God. Brados, your faith will stand the test of time. In the name of Jesus, Shate Brados, nothing will cut you short. In the name of Jesus, because of this decision, your generations after generations will be blessed. 
Ila katuko brokodusha kenda brakadesta eketa brodo kosta hila bradosta. You will grow in sacrifice. You will grow in love for God. You will grow in love for the people of God. In the name of Jesus, Shato Bradosta. I pray that your mouth will be less with God's power. When you speak, the wisdom of God will come out. None of your words will fall to the ground. In the name of Jesus, the Lord anoints your head like the oil with the oil of gladness. In the name of Jesus, all around you, they will see the glory and the goodness of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we'll pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we'll pray. Amen, 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 and amen. Can we give Jesus a big clap in the house? Hallelujah. You may please have your seat. I understand that we have a representative, your valedictorian, that wants to give a speech. So I'd like to call on Dr. Elizabeth for a speech. Please, can we? Please give her a microphone. You're welcome, ma'am. Good afternoon. I hope you have a short speech. I can see a lot of people. <laughs> Please go ahead. Grace, Grace, this is my story. Good afternoon, pastors. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and my fellow graduates. Before I begin, I would like to say that this foundation course has been a life transforming journey for me. And I encourage everyone who has not participated to scan the barcode on the screen and register now for the next batch. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. As we gather here today to celebrate the culmination of our journey through the Harvesters Church Foundation classes, I am filled with a sense of gratitude and pride. Each one of us has embarked on a unique path of spiritual growth and discovery. And today we stand on the brick of a new chapter in our lives. Throughout our time together, we have been nurtured, guided by the teachings of our faith, learning invaluable lessons of compassion, kindness, and perseverance. We have forged lasting bond with one another, supporting and uplifting each other through both trials and challenges. As we reflect on the lesson learned and the memory shared, let us not forget the significance of this moment. It is, a it is a testament of our dedication, hard work, and unwavering commitment to our spiritual journey, but it's also a reminder of the responsibility that comes with our newfound knowledge and understanding. As we step out into the world beyond these walls, let us carry with us the lesson we have learned and the values we hold there. Let us strive to beckon of the light and hope, spreading love and compassion wherever we go. Let us never waver in our faith, but instead, let it be a guiding force in all that we do. As we, bid farewell, as we bid farewell to this chapter of our lives and look ahead to the future, let us embrace the challenges that lies ahead with a courage and determination. For we are not just graduates of Harvesters Church Foundation classes, but ambassadors of faith, ready to make a positive impact on the world. Congratulations, my fellow graduates. May your future be filled with blessing beyond your measure, and may your heart always be filled with the light of faith. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Doctor. You know, one of the things that this foundation course does for us is that it builds your conviction. I have come to understand that a lot of Christians, we don't know, and that's why we're not able to become fully. And so, there is another batch happening next month. If you feel like this year, I want to grow in the things of God. I want to know how to study. I want to know how to hear the voice of God. I want to know how to make decisions based on the word of God. You want to scan the barcode and you want to register for it. Let me ask your neighbor, do you need to register for the next foundation class? Ask, ask, and wait for a response. Do you need to register? If your neighbor does not sound sure, that means the neighbor needs to register. Hallelujah. And so for the graduates, please, um, your certificates and picture taken with me will happen after the service at the back. Hallelujah. Can we rise to our feet as we go into a powerful time of worship? You know, for those of us that this year we have not gone to the hospital, we need to give God some praise. Hallelujah. I thought you'd be jumping up by now and shouting hallelujah. I 
I haven't gone to the hospital this year. I don't know about you, but it's the first Sunday in the month of April, and I'm grateful to God. My car has not been involved in any accident. I'm grateful to God. I've not had to beg to eat. I'm grateful to God. They said there's economic blah, 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 but I am not seeing it. I'm grateful to God. I can fill my car. I'm grateful to God. I can eat what I want. They are not passing tubes on my body. I'm grateful to God. So if you're in the house this morning and you want to give God some praise, can you lift up your hands and begin to thank the name of the Lord? Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Dominion and power belong to you, O oh God. All the glory and honor, dominion and power belong to you, O oh God. Thine is the key. 
of Jesus once again we're grateful for your love your kindness your patience and we ask in the name of Jesus as the word of God has been taught today you speak to every heart in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we well, thank you because we're asking you open the eyes of understanding you will bring healing to every heart we ask you in Jesus name we pray amen praise the Lord say with me I'm irrevocably blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, you can have your seat. Amen. To announcement quickly, we welcome all of our churches are watching. And welcome from all the churches. Welcome in Jesus' name. Amen. To announcement quickly, number one, um, NLP conferences in less than 30 days in the UK. Praise the Lord. NLP conferences less than 30 days in the UK. So please, I, I want us to... All of us are going to the UK, buy your tickets right now. The second thing is that if you have a friend in the UK, can you take the flyer and send to them and let them know that we have a life-changing program that we, that we can send to them. So it's there, you know, we'll have a life-changing program to send to them. So you can take a picture on the screen. You can go to my page and get the flyer and share with a friend. You can take a picture, we'll take a flyer and share with the friends that lives in the UK. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, the last, um, for those in the Lekki Church where I'm broadcasting today from, I want to let you know that um, we have been having a lot of cars and um, it's like a big problem right now. So one of the things we want to let you know is that we have a new car park that is opposite Coliseum Conference Center. 
it's opposite Coliseum. So if you know Coliseum, just opposite, there's a new car park there. I'm saying so, so that you don't have to go around driving, waiting for 10, 20 minutes before car park. You can just go park your car there, take the shuttle, that will bring you to church. Glory to God. That's a good time to put it together and, you know, and I appreciate the Lord for that. So, so that, that will be good. Amen. Where's Stephanie? She's not back. Okay. You need to tell her to call me, you know, or call for you, you know. All right. Amen. All right. Let's get into the word of God today. <clears throat> So, well, thought, thought service will be a whole lot better. And um, maybe what you want to do is to share the link on your, on your social media and tell someone that, hey, we're talking about emotional healing recovery today. And today will be a big day for you to tune into the service. The feedback has been very, very powerful. I got a message after the third service from Canada. And, the, you know, I can read it to you. <clears throat> I can read it to you. I got a message from the third service in Canada. I can read it to you. Um, where is it? It said, feedback of the service so far, especially the third. It is what is just is it is just now I realize how broken I have been. Pastor B, you need to see heavy tears in my eyes right here in Canada. I was not only emotionally abused, my sister was, and I only got to know last year. She's 41. She was abused at the age of seven. I'm torn apart. I don't even know how to act like a Christian in this regard. I'm very angry with my father. I'm everything that anger can describe right now. You know, so it's a very powerful series. You know, you know, someone sent me another message. Second service was literally powerful, Pastor B. I didn't even know when the tears rolled down my eyes. Thank you for teaching so powerfully. The way you address chanel was definitely the highlight of the service for me i'm not sure anyone left the service the same god bless you more so people have been sharing just how powerful this series we are starting and it's a new series because this just the so if the stat is this punchy normally this happens at the third week if the stat is this punchy you can only wait to see what will happen throughout the whole series so if you don't if you have a moment you have a phone you have a stream media handle you can we're streaming on live. You can just click on the live and just say what and just share on your handle. Praise the Lord. No, that's not good enough. Praise the Lord. Even if we're not sharing, at least praise the Lord. Glory to God. Exactly. Hallelujah. And um, this week, we're going to put a lot of posts out about emotional healing and health. And I hope that you will be able to share it. So this morning and this month, we're going to start a very powerful teaching on overcoming emotional trauma and pain overcoming emotional trauma and pain overcoming emotional trauma and pain glory to god it's good for us to start from the place of the word of god let's third john verse 2 this is my scripture next week but let me bring into this week third john verse 2 third john verse 2 let's just get i want to go it said beloved i wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospered you know, the reason why this is powerful is this. Your phone is powerful if your phone doesn't have battery. Every function in your phone will not work, yes or no? Do you know when your battery is low, most phones will limit your function, yes or no? That battery is like your emotion. That battery is like your emotion. That battery is like your emotion. Once your emotion is, I, I don't know, like my phone, once my battery is low, my phone will begin to, res, to restrict me from doing certain things. So when you find people that are emotionally low or emotionally damaged, you'll find out that there are certain things. I'll give you an example. So they want to love, but they cannot love. And the reason why they cannot love is not because they don't want to love, but because their emotional capacity doesn't just can carry that weight. So, one of the things we need to know is that if you're going to do well at work, you're going to do well in business, you're going to do well in marriage, the first thing, one of the first things you have to pay attention to is the prosperity of your own soul. You have to pay attention to the prosperity of your own soul. So, why does the devil really, really attack emotions? Why does the devil really attack emotions? You know, I really believe... That the reason why devil attacks emotion is this. I believe that the devil targets souls. 
and target emotions because it allows him a seed that can use to run, ruin a family. That's why the devil targets it. it. It gives him something he can use to what? Ruin a family. First Samuel chapter 13 tells us a story about someone that had an emotional challenge and he ruined him. His name is Amnon. Amnon, most of you don't know him too well. Amnon is the first child of David. So if David died, instead of Solomon becoming the king, Amnon was meant to be what? The next king. But Amnon had emotional issues, ended up sleeping with a what? With his sister, not sleeping, ended up raping his sister, ended up raping his sister. And because of those issues, he eventually lost the throne because his stepbrother killed him. The reason why you must deal with emotional trauma is this. It would, if you don't deal with emotional trauma, it would just cage your life. It would literally cage your life. It would literally cage your life. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So what is trauma? Let's define trauma quickly. Are you ready? Let's get this right. One, tra trauma is a lasting emotional response from living through a stressful, scary, or life-threatening event. What is trauma? Trauma is a lasting emotional response from living through a stressful, scary, or life-threatening event. You know, um, there's this lady, there's this lady, she, she, there's this lady I met, and there's, lady, there's this lady I met, and this is a very, you know, this is a very, for me, it's a, quite a painful story. This lady I met is quite a painful story. And she told me about how she was single and she hated it. But yet, she could not find herself loving somebody else. And I said, tell me what this looks like. She said, well, I was married. And I said that the person I was married to was a wonderful person. I said, so what happened? He said, I destroyed it. I said, how do you destroy it? He said, you don't understand my background. He said, I was raised up and she was raised up abroad. He said, I was raised up in a way that my mother was so selfish. He said, my mother would spit in my face when she gets angry. Spit in her face. He said, when my mother, when my mother comes home with her boyfriend, my mother will lock me out of the house. He said, they will be having sex. I will hear them and I will sleep up on the staircase. He said, I grew up. He said, I just grew up. Just, I just grew up with a lot of hatred. I grew up with a lot of bitterness. He said, so I find a man that loves me, but I'm not able to love back. And I'm not able to love back, not because I don't want to love back. I don't know what love is. He said, we had kids, but just a matter of time, I pulled away. And that's what trauma does. Very painful story. She, she, I said, why are you saying this right now? He said, because right now, I've just lost someone that loves me. He said, this guy traveled all the way to come and see me in our state. He said, the least I could have done was to go ahead and pick him at the airport. I just texted him, welcome, I'll see you tomorrow. He said, the guy was so disappointed. He said, the guy traveled eight hours to see me. He said, the guy was so disappointed. He said, but the thing is that it does not occur to me. He said, it's when I've scattered the relationship. That's when it will occur to me the things I've done. It's almost as if I hustle for love. And when love falls into my hands, I use my hands to destroy it. And that kind of behavior is actually a behavior of what? Of is an effect of trauma because one of the things trauma does to you is that trauma makes you self-sabotage. What's self-sabotage? You want something, then trauma makes you do something that will make you go against it. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Look at Hebrews chapter 12 verse 15. Let's read one scripture. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 15. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 15. Are you there? The Bible says this, and this word trauma is very powerful. It says, looking diligently, lest any man fail of what? Of the grace of God. How do they feel of the grace of God? How? Lest any root of bitterness, and that some part of bitterness means trauma. He said, be careful, let any root of bitterness spring up, trouble you, and therefore defile you. So the, peop the reason why people don't have grace when it comes to marriage 
they don't have grace in a certain area of their life is because they've allowed what bitterness, trauma to spring up. It's like a root within their system. It's like a root within their system. So what does trauma do? So the first thing is this. Emotional trauma can make it difficult for you to communicate your feelings or your needs. Emotional trauma can make it difficult for you to communicate your feelings or your needs. When you see people, oh wow, when you see people that have gone through trauma, one of the things you will notice is this. This is one of the things you will notice. It will be very, very difficult for them to communicate their needs. I grew up, you know, um, my, you know, some people, I grew up with a father that was absent. So my father lived somewhere else. We lived with our mom. That's how I grew up. And my mom, you know, and, you know, my mom was trying her best, you know, but just the dynamics. So I grew up with an absent father. I grew up with an absent father. And my father was unavailable. Let me say this quickly. Anytime there's no dad at home. When I say dad at home, not just at home, present, available and doing his work. It causes chaos in the children most of the time. And I'll show it to you. When you see ladies that are attracted to older men, most of the time is an absent father problem syndrome that they have. What, and I'll give an example. A lady, I spoke to a lady in the UK and she was saying to me, and she was, say, she was describing this to me, you know, just describing this to me in a very powerful way. She was describing this to me, how the father wasn't there. You know, it was describing to me how the father wasn't there. And all those things. And I, I, I mean, no, that's not where it started. I spoke to the in the UK. She wanted to get married and she began to cry. I said, why are you crying? He said, I don't know why. I'm attracted to very old men and they're married. He said, people that come into my life are just old men. They're married. And, you know, and I don't know why. I, why can't I attract young people? I, I, and she was crying. And I asked her a question. I said, tell me about your father. He said, my father was never really there. I said, and you miss him, right? He said, yes, I really miss him because I want him to live my life. I said, when you did this older people, what do you gain? He said, there's a lot of maturity and wisdom. I said, do you notice something? That it seems to me as if when you date these people, you are looking for your father. She broke down in tears and said, I never connected it before. But now that you have said it, the truth is that what I'm looking for is my father. Sometimes you see a girl that it's not as if she needs money, she's coming from a comfortable home, and she's following this old person. Because sometimes rich, all of you that are rich, please listen to me. Rich people, all of them, I'm telling you, because rich parents have the tendency to think, providing my, my, my son good school, car, money, and all of these things will meet emotional need. Money does not meet emotional need. As a matter of fact, money amplifies emotional need. You know, when you are poor, you don't pay attention to your emotions. It's when you become comfortable that you begin to know that I feel sad. I don't feel connected. I don't feel appreciated. And that's why most, most people that are poor don't, you know, it's not as though they don't, for example, in third world countries, emotional problems are not as many as first world countries. It's not because we don't have emotional problems in third world countries. Because we are looking for survival. We have not the reality of the problems have not dawned on us. But as we move higher in the hierarchy, it dawns on us. And I'm saying so because all of you that have, all of you that have kids, all of you that have that well to do, the tendency is to say to you, see, um, I provide house, I provide this, I provide that. What are you looking for? The same thing with wives. Same thing with wives. Rich men are still operating marriage like old city. <laughs> oh my God. You know, rich men are still, are still thinking of marriage like, like it used to be in the 1970s. You will hear, what, 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 what don't I do for you? I provide you a good car. I provide you a good house. I provide you money for the children. What do I do for you? Syllabus have changed. Women are looking for men that they can emotionally connect to, not just providers. And that's why if you marry a man because he's rich, it's good to, I mean, if you marry a man because he's rich, guess what? The first two years, you'll be satisfied. If you last two years. Then after two years, it will, you, will, you will realize that I want more than money. The reason why is that the way the human need is structured, once your basic need is met, you want higher needs. You want that need of connection. And what does emotion, what's emotional need mean? Emotional need means that I feel safe with you. 
I feel supported by you. I know you are there for me. I know you listen to me. I know I matter to you. I, I know I'm not just an item in your house. I feel that once I talk, you catch me. Once you talk, I catch you. That there's this connection within the two of us. So when men are still saying that, eh, you know, I, you know, I provide for you, I bought a car for you, I send money to your parents, I pay your school fees. We're not saying that you don't do that. But syllabus has been upgraded. So in addition to that, 21st century men know that in addition to provision, there must be an emotional what? Attention. And that's why you see a very rich man, his wife is sleeping with the try cleaner. Because Oga can provide money, but he cannot provide attention. And the one that can provide attention is the one that owns the heart. Thank you for that hire. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. So emotional trauma can make it difficult for you to express yourself. For, for example, for example, if you were raised in a home where you were taught not to talk, is it possible I was raised in a home like that? You know, and this is how you know you were raised in a way where you were not taught to talk. Every time you express your emotion, you are shut down. Come on, why are you crying? Why are you crying? Are you just crying? Come on, come on, come on. And, and your emotions are never investigated. Rather, they are shut down. What will happen to you is that over time, you will learn a pattern of what? Suppressing your emotion. And this is why men die early. You know why? Because men have a lot of things going on within them, but they are taught to, they are taught to think, as a man, you should not talk. As a man, you should not cry. As a man, you should suppress it. As a man, just be stable. As a man, keep it there. One day, the man will just permit. Because when they were growing up, you see, let me tell you, when you, you hear things like, ah, you know a man, stop crying. Listen, you're a man, cry. I, I'm not okay, it's good. Sometimes when you're not okay, hey, I'm not okay, leave man alone, I'm not okay. I, I need help. Is that me, married man? And so what? Is that not the reason why men die way ahead of women and the suicide rate is higher amongst men than women? You, some... Sometimes you hear the weirdest thing they would do. I, I heard one not too long ago. A lady I know personally, she and her husband woke up, they went to work, they came back. The guy did not come back. Okay. The lady said, calling. Guy did not come back next day. Then two days after, the guy called. He said, ha, honey, the lady had been just like literally mad, looking everywhere. The guy just called. He said, honey, he said, what happened? Kidnap? This, this, it. He said, come now. He said, look at the number. I'm calling you from the U.S. I want to let you know I'm in the U.S. And I'm not married. Our life before is in my past. I've come here to settle down afresh. May God bless you and thank you for all you have done. Just move on. Someone say, ah, that man is wicked. I don't doubt he's wicked though. But for him to come to that, who was he talking to? Shabby, they say they should not talk. That's the result of not talking. Because if he was talking... It will come out of it. I'm not saying what he did was perfect. I'm not saying what he did was right. But I'm saying that if there was opportunity for expression, he will not come to that point. Because everybody needs a point of outlet or else they will explode. Everybody needs a point of outlet or else they will explode. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. So, why is it important to heal? Because emotional, emotional trauma can take away your voice. Some of you, can, let, let, let's, let, let's look back. Some of you, people say you've changed your quiet. You are not quiet. It was the trauma that took away your voice. This was not how you were, you were young. But this was not how you were when you were young. But as life began to happen, the impact of the experiences was that your voice went. You just found a place where you were not able to express yourself again. What does trauma do to people also? Sometimes when people go to tra through trauma, trauma makes people, so they, sometimes when people go through trauma, they become people pleasers.
when people go through trauma, sometimes they become people pleasers. Someone says, how do I not be a people pleaser? I will tell you how you know you're a people pleaser. Number one, you hide, you hide your need. You hide your need. Your, and you, how do I not be a people pleaser? You hide your need. You hide your thoughts because you are scared that people will judge you or they will be against you. So you begin to hide. So when people tell you, are you okay? You know you're not okay. You cannot express yourself. The second way you know if you're a people pleaser is this. You pretend to be okay when someone makes you uncomfortable. I mean, when people are people pleasers, and, and you know why? One of the reasons, let me say it this way, narcissists are, narcissists are always looking out to target people pleasers. I, I'm telling you, and, and the reason why is that narcissists knows you will never say what you want. They, they know that they can always impose themselves on you. So you will have, so you will, you will, you will, you will, oh my God. One time, there's a very popular guy today. He's, a, he's an actor. He was very good with girls. And he now got born again. I preached to him, he got born again. And I asked him, you were having four or five girls, girlfriends at the same time. I said, well, the girlfriend's not jealous. And he showed me, he told me something. He said, Pastor, my girlfriends can never be jealous. I said, why? He said, if they meet themselves in my place, they will fight themselves and not fight me. Ah. I said, eh? Not that he was rich, though. I said, is that something that you use on them? It's not something. He said, the kind of girl I choose are girls that I look at them very well. They are very needy. They need my love. If I withdraw it from them, they'll be shattered. He said, those are the kind of girls I choose. And the reason why is that I want girls that cannot look me in the eyes. In other words, he was choosing girls that people pleasing. Those girls would rather make themselves sad for him to be happy than for him to be sad and they'll be honest to themselves. But the reason why people do that thing is because of trauma. You know, because, because when you have trauma, trauma can make you desperately cling for love even when it's abusive oh my god you know what I'm talking about trauma can make you desperately cling for love when it's abusive you know that this is an abusive you, you know this is an abusive relationship have you not seen people that they will beat them they will go back they will beat them they will go back they will beat them they will go back ah, in fact one lady told me sometime he said when he beats me he said, I feel the pain, but it excites me because his beating me is a function of jealousy. I looked at the girl. I said, hey, your brain is upside down. I, I could not tell her that way. Oh. You know, when she said that, I just kept quiet because anything you say, he will go and tell that boy again. I said, wow, wow, wow. I said, what, what a love. What a love and a lover. Wow, 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 wow. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Someone says, how do I get out of trauma? The way you get out of trauma is to tell yourself, it started one day to end one day. The last thing about trauma is this, because I want to take some contribution. That's about trauma is this, you know, which is very powerful. You know, trauma can make you emotionally unavailable. Emotionally what? Unavailable. How do you know if you are unavailable emotionally? Number one, you don't pay attention to your emotional to your emotional state. It's a long time. Someone say, "How do you feel?" You sincerely, you don't know how you feel. Sincerely, you don't know how you feel. And the reason why you don't want to know how you feel is that it's not as if you're lying. You've just chosen not to know how you feel because if you know how you feel, you pay attention to it. So you don't want to know what to feel. You know, have you not seen some people that work very hard in the office? Most of them are not married. It's not because they like their job. They use their job to distract themselves from what? From life. Someone was telling me about the boss. This boss is about maybe about 40 years old in the bank. The lady who told me walking, 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 walk to 12, 12 midnight. He said, because she walks that she, she can't go home. One day just said, sir, excuse me, man, if we need to go. The boss just shouted, and me, I don't have a house. 
And deep down in that woman, the reason why she's doing that is that she's lonely, she's scared. If she goes home on time, she will go and face an empty bed and a cold pillow. So she walks herself to tiredness so that as soon as she gets home, before she sees Jack Robinson, she slips off. And the reason why is that that lady has become emotionally what? Unavailable. The second way you know if you're not emotionally available is this. This is the second way. Number two, you, when you're emotionally available, you try to avoid feelings. You don't want people to come. See, when you're emotionally unavailable, you literally draw a box and say, don't come inside this box. If someone says, I like you, there's a way you will respond and reflect it back. Because you don't want that I like you to sink inside. Ah, you are beautiful. <laughs> Thanks, eh? You know, the reason why is that you don't want it to sink inside. You don't want it to sink at all. And as a part of emotional availability, I was sharing in the other service. When I was younger, something happened to me. And most of you have experienced this. Oh, wow. We had gone on, there was a trip we had gone on. And this guy came on the trip also. And when he came on the trip, I stepped off. He had come back in the night. He had come back late. And uh, I stepped off, you know, guy, guy thing. I just had my t-shirt on, like, short on. And uh, the guy just came and stepped beside me. And I just noticed he was just touching me. Or just touching me. When I say touching me, like touching my body, you know, you know, some some part clingy. So I thought maybe it meant I thought maybe he was trying to hug me to sleep. Yeah, you know, but this was more than touch, you know, more than hug. He was just touching me, and this is a very painful story. I mean, it's funny right now. Huh. Then I just opened my eyes and I saw him on top of me. He was naked. He was naked. I was younger. I, I didn't know as much as I knew today. He was naked. And as he was naked, he was touching me. And, and something I ex I've never experienced in my life happened. I just froze. I just, I just froze like this. Like I was on the bed, but I just froze like this. I couldn't stop him, but I couldn't encourage him. He took up my shirt, took up my top, kissing my chest, but I just froze like this. Then it occurred to him that I wasn't responding. Then he left me alone. And he went back and slept. And I couldn't sleep. When you go to trauma, that thing that happened to me, happens to you. It's called emotional freezing. In emotional freezing, you are there, but you checked out of your body. <clears throat> and many of you know what I'm talking about. If you, have, if you have been raped before or been touched inappropriately, those things happen to you. You just check out. Or sometimes when someone dies, you'll be there. Have you seen someone die? You just, they'll just be looking. What are you looking at? They've checked out. So they are dead like, they are literally dead, but they've checked out. They, they are emotions and it's not there again. And the reason I'm saying so is that check out can be in different stages. Some of you, you have checked out emotionally. That's why the man that loves you has done so much to show you love you. You cannot feel it. You can't feel it not because he has not done it. You've checked out. The girl, your wife, is trying to make the marriage work. She has tied ribbon on her head. She, did, she has cooked food. You, everything she does, you cannot see it. And the reason why you can't see that, you have checked out. You have totally checked out emotionally. In fact, let me tell you something. Checking out can be a, a habit. You'll be at work, oh, smiling. Mm -hmm. As soon as you are driving, as soon as you get to your house gate, you check out. The you at work has emotions. The you at home has no emotions. Because when you get home, one of your coping mechanisms is to check out your emotion. Is to freeze your emotion. So you get home. So when your home says, hi, how are you? I'm fine. Have you eaten? I've eaten. As we gave you food. That's good. Even if your husband says, let's have sex. 
you'll be having sex. It, to you, it's not sex. It's just body coming to each other. If you're not saying, you'll be saying, twinkle, twinkle, little star. How oh, I wonder how you are. I want to say, ah. But you're not responding. Say, oh, oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I'd be like, ah, but this guy has a bad breath. Oh, Jesus Christ. You know, and the reason why is that you've checked out. Some of you are dating, but you have checked out. When you have checked out, if the person holds you, it will be as if nail is in their hand. Oh, do you know what I'm talking about? And the reason why is that you've checked out, you've just checked out emotionally. And even though you are trying to do something, you, can, you cannot find yourself responding because you have literally what? Checked out. And I want to close with this. If you're dealing with trauma, and you say that, I've been through so many pain, I don't think I can recover. I want to ask you something. Think of your trauma as planting, not burial. What's the difference between planting and burial? The two of them are the same. Because if something is, wow, if something is, every seed was buried, yes or no? But it was planted, so it has a future. But when you are buried, there's no future. So, when you, ha when you have gone through trauma, don't think as if I'm buried. Think as if I'm planted. I'm buried means that is my end. I'm planted means I'm dying to resurrect again in a better way. So, I know that there was rape. I know that I lost my dad. I know my brother abused me. I know I went through a divorce. But I'm planted. I'm not buried. Buried means that is my end. Planted means I'm here for a season and I will resurrect again. Look at him and say, you are planted and not buried. Yesterday, that guy that touched me that way, I called him. And we had a conversation. Because he's my friend today. And that's where healing is. Healing is when you can look at your abuser. And instead of you to have pain against them, what you feel is compassion and mercy for them. Because what I'm thinking is about what must you have gone through that will have turned you to that kind of person. Because sometimes when people have trauma and that trauma comes to you, you are not the object of their trauma. You are just the byproduct of their trauma. They didn't intend to hurt you, but because they are hurt and you are around, you are the one that bears the consequences of their hurt. But I will never forget that day in my life. And it took me a lot because that experience almost shattered me. It almost changed, changed almost into everything. If not for God. And that's why I'm teaching this. That's why I'm teaching this. Some of you, you want, you want love, but you are emotionally unavailable. You can be spiritual and be broken. You can be a pastor and have trauma effect on your life. Sometimes the trauma is from what you've seen your parents do. You bring it into your life. Sometimes it's what your neighbors do. You bring it into your life. Trauma that happens to them not to be your own. If you read the story in 1 Samuel chapter 13, you will know that Amnon, nothing happened to him. But the trauma of Tama, the sister, was transferred to him. Glory to God. I want to ask for two experiences. You know, two people that will ask experience and share questions. How, what this meant to you. Some of you, as I'm talking, your heart is beating so fast because of some things that have happened. Can you raise up your hands and let's, let's discuss. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to take from the back, then come forward. The lady, there's a lady here at the back. We need more microphones on. Yeah, there's a lady. There's also a guy. The lady first. Yeah. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. What's your name, please? I'm Oluwa Damilola. Okay. Um, I attended this, the third service. Okay. I attended the third service. I've not stopped crying since then. Um, 
I didn't realize how broken I am until you started preaching and I heard others speak and I realized that that was my situation. Um, I had a very, very bad um, upbringing. My father used to hit my mom and um, it was almost always chaotic in my home, well, in my house um, at the time. And um, I never really recovered from it. And um, I realized that um, now, everything that happened to me that I vowed would not happen to my daughter is happening because I'm in a marriage that Um, I'm in a marriage that um, um, I think has broken my daughter, damaged her so much. I don't know how to help her because I don't think I ever came to terms with my emotions. So um, here I am. And I understand what you mean by an out-of-body experience. Um, being emotionally frozen, as you put it. I have that a lot. So at home, you're not there when your husband comes. Most times. Sometimes I am. Sometimes I'm not because I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm, I wouldn't have done this. I just knew that I wouldn't go back and then I couldn't go back. Not like this. You know, um, I would say to myself, I'll get counseling. I would talk to someone. I would never do that. I'm the kind of person that I, I really do not like. This is like the most daring thing I've ever done in my life. Um, and that's coming to terms with what then? this. But let's, have, let's put that together for her. <laughs> and that is the first step to healing. You cannot change what you refuse to confront. You cannot change what you ignore. The first thing is to, the Bible says it this way, and the prodigal son, I, I wish you can divide the screen if it's possible. You know, and the prodigal son, is that the prodigal son came to himself. The prodigal son came to himself. I, I have some questions for you, ma'am. Your parents' marriage. What were you running away from? Three things. The abuse. The abuse. Um, um, the lack of care, because I don't think they really... You can, you can explain to me so that I can understand. You can give me examples if it's possible. The abuse, there was physical abuse, they were hitting each other. Yes. Um, okay. And we were right in the middle of it all. Um, we, as children, had to, um, we had to care for ourselves um, emotionally because, I mean, um, my mom was way younger than my father. My father was emotionally unavailable. Um, and my mother was always sad, almost always sad. And okay. um, we felt we didn't have to burden her with our own emotions. Yeah. And right now, that's, what you find, that's where you find yourself. So the first thing you have to, you, you start saying the right thing. So the first thing is that, what is within your control that you can change right now? The first thing I've done is this, which is speaking. Speaking. Out. Excellent. 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 The second thing I will say is this.
it's difficult to become what you have not seen. Do you have any friend that their marriage is really healthy? Not from the outside, from the inside. It's really hard to detect these things. Um, I do have friends that are married and um, some of them you realize that it's not as rosy as they make it out to seem. Mm. Um, as a matter of fact, most of them. Um, so you don't have any friend that you can I, say that? I, the, no, no, no. That you can say, you, 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 may not, you, you may not know, but you cannot say authoritatively, I have this friend that the marriage is beautiful within, not without. Someone close to you. It might not be... And you know a lot of people. Yes, I, I, I do. I, I think my sister has a good marriage. She has a good marriage. Okay. Excellent. The reason why is that I would love you to do something. I would love you to expose yourself more to your sister's marriage. And when you expose yourself to your sister's marriage, don't have a feeling of regret. Have a feeling of recreation. You know why I'm saying this to you? The reason why I don't, for your sister not to marry, to marry and be good, I don't know her, but along a journey, she must have gotten an intervention that took her on the path. I will tell you the reason why. And you can confirm this or not. Everybody moves, everybody gravitates towards what is familiar. I'll give an example. If there's a buffet here now and there are food from 25 countries, Without me telling you what to eat, you will gravitate towards Nigerian food. You know why? The mind gravitates towards what is familiar. Not what is good, what is familiar. What is familiar may not be good. That's why even though you want to lose weight, as soon as you see cake, you eat it. Cake affects your goal negatively, but that is what is familiar. And let me say something to you because I've lost a lot of weight. Once you begin to lose weight, after some time, your taste buds will change. But because there was a way your taste was used to crave before, it changed. So the first thing you have to do is this. This is the first thing you have to do. You have to develop all these two or three marriages that you spend a lot of time in. You know, as you spend a lot of time, let me tell you what happened to you. Number one, you will begin to see what you should be doing. You can see what the husband should be doing, but that's not your business because your husband is out of your control. But you begin to see how you should be responding. And the reason why is that because of the state you are in, you're quite unhappy and you're quite negative. Yes or no? I can't hear you, ma'am. I didn't realize that, what? Didn't realize that but yes. Yeah. You're quite unhappy, you're quite negative. Then the third, so th that would be the third thing. But the second thing is that you have to take it. You have to take responsibility for your state. What does the take response for your state is? You have to keep yourself in a positive state. You know why? If you keep staying negative, that thing will rub off of your child. And your child, you say, how do I help my child? By exposing your child to right marriages. Is it possible for your child to go and stay with your sister? No. Is it possible? No, no, no. I mean, not now, not now. Maybe after exams, at some point in the future. Yeah. The reason why is that you want your child to be able to see something different. Why do we take our kids abroad? We just want them to know that there's a place where Nepal does not take light. We want them to know there's a place where training works, system works. So, so when they grow up, they grow up with a certain mindset. The same thing, you want to take your child to a place where he knows that there's a place where there's love, there's harmony. It may not be like that in my home, but it does not mean it does not exist. The reason why is that once your child can see it, she can go for it. And because your child is in her formative years, she can also see what it takes. You know, I want to ask a question. Why do all of us speak Nigerian English with Nigerian accent? Nobody touches Nigerian accent. All you have to pick up the accent is to be in this country and be around people. In fact, when you hear your accent, I can tell what part of the country you are born in. Yes or no? Why? Nobody teaches you accent. You pick it up. Nobody teaches you this thing. Just pick it up in relationships. And that's what I'm asking for your daughter. That put her around so much good marital accent that she can pick it up.
Does that make sense to you? Is that helpful? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Pastor. All right, thank you. But I think you need to sign up for one of the counseling programs and we can help consistently with that. Thank you. Yes, someone else raised up their hands. Let, let's go and have shit. Yes, yes. There's a guy. And I can come. Did someone have raised up their hand here? Someone raised up their hand here. Okay. Yeah. Please good, go ahead. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Um, I was able to connect something during the third um, service. So you want to share your own experience? Yes. Right? Okay, yeah. Um, I have problem. I have issues with receiving gifts from ladies. Yeah. I don't appreciate them enough. Like when I receive a gift from ladies, I just feel indebted to them. I feel okay. This person has invested something in me. She's expecting something in return. Um, until the third service, I was able to connect something. My family was a, um, I grew up in a very rough family. My mom is richer than my dad. And my dad is not employed, he's poor. And your mom leveraged it. Exactly. So my mom took care of us. My mom paid the whole dues, but my dad was not able to provide. And um, at some point, my mom painted my dad as an ungrateful person, this and that. Uh, my mom nags a lot. And um, growing up, I didn't realize all these things. Growing up, I just feel, okay, I want someone better. I'm always looking out for, I'm always looking out for someone that is completely different from my mom. When it comes to marriage, my mom has inspired me a lot, business-wise and every other aspect. But when but it comes to... But you find that you keep, you keep liking people that like your mom, right? I, I dislike people that behave like my mom. But okay. at the same time... But when you want to date, who do you date? Is that people like your mom, right? Exactly. I date people like my mom. And I find it difficult. When a lady nags at me, it is the easiest way for me to just abstain from them. I don't want to care about how much I've invested in the relationship. But the moment you're able to raise your voice at me probably because of your work or your finances, and you're able to raise up your voice at me, I just tend to withdraw gradually. Why do you think you, although you don't want to date people like your mom, why do you end up dating them? Um, I just think, um, I, I've not been able to heal for something. I have some mentalities about this union thing. Yeah. I, growing up, I used to see, hear my elderly one saying, if a lady feeds you, you can, they can feed you with um, shit. Like they, they will feed you shit. So I had this orientation that I don't want to, I don't want to, I, don't, I just want to work hard to be richer than my wife. And um, this thing has been a very, 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 it's a, it's a really bad thing I've been struggling with because I love my partner to be wealthy. I want a very successful partner. I always love to stand with my partner. And um, what do you think, what is your biggest fear? My biggest this? fear is ending up with a lady that would treat me the same way my mom treated my dad growing up, because they are way successful than, um, than him. Do you think your fear is the one motivating you right now? Um, I just set boundaries to everything. If I, if I'm so why do you set boundaries? Because of your fear? Because of my fear, sir. Okay. I set boundaries. I... So why are you afraid? Because your mom mistreated your dad because he had more money. I want to ask you, are there no other women that are rich, richer than their husbands and don't mistreat their husbands? Um, I, uh, to be sincere, sir. You've not the, seen any? I've not seen any yet. That's great. No, 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 no. And that's why I said, see, I told you something. You gravitate towards what is what familiar. Exactly, sir. So the first thing I'll tell you this is, number one, fear is never helpful. Most of the time, fear is not helpful. And that's why, although you never want to date someone like your mom, you keep dating so like your mom. The reason why is that you are like your dad. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yeah. It's a chemistry. Most of us date people that don't have, that can meet an emotional need you have. I can tell you why you date them. I can tell you. So let me tell you. You date those girls because one of the things they do for you is that they inspire you and give you confidence. Yes or no? Yes, sir. How do I know? Because that's exactly what your father found. But the extreme of that is that anybody that can give you confidence and all those kind of things, sometimes they can also be a bit abusive because they are like instructors. Yes, sir. Correct, sir. Excellent. So what do we do now? I don't think the problem is with the girls. I think the problem is with you. So firstly, like I told the other lady, 
you have to stay in the environment where you can be positive. Right now, your fear is driving you. And the Bible says, what you fear will eventually happen to you. So, instead of letting your fear drive you, why not let your vision drive you? You're looking, so emotionally, you're looking for a, man, a woman that will challenge you and inspire you. But what you need to have is a vision that challenges you. Either you need a woman there or you don't need a woman at all. So the first thing is this. Don't let your fear drive you. Let your vision drive you. Number two, expose yourself to relationships where the man is okay. The woman is okay. So that your mind can have another frame of reference. Yeah, so that your mind can have what? Another frame of reference. Have you seen people that enter lead for the first time? Or escalator? Have you seen them before? Have you seen them before? Why did they shake that way? There's no frame of reference in their mind. So the reason why you are shaky is because in your mind, there's no frame of reference. The third thing I will say is, to, so the first thing is a vision, vision over fear. Second is, 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 is this. Then the third thing is that you now need to work on yourself. Yeah. That frame of mind that, for you to be saying, I don't want to marry a man, a woman richer than me, it's already defective. It's, it's, that is damaged. Because I don't think that when I was going to get married, I was concerned if my wife was richer or not. I just had the feeling that I'm the head of the family. Is that not true? So, as you're feeling that way, it's already defective. It's, it's, there's a perception defect in your mindset that you have to correct. And the reason why that is there is this. I'll tell you the reason why it's there. Because behind it, there's a low self-esteem problem. Do you think so? I'm asking you, do you think so? I, I, I don't think so, sir. Okay. I'm sorry to say this. No, no, no. You know, you know, the, you know, that's why I said, do you think so? Remember, I didn't say in front of it. I said behind it. Because I will tell you why I think behind okay. it. And you don't have to accept this. At least you accept it too. You don't have to accept the third one. You know, behind it. I'll tell you why I think so. I've never thought one day in my life that my wife will have to support me financially since I was born. I've never thought. And it's just a mental frame of my mind. I've never thought in my life that my wife will be so rich, I will have to cut her wings. I've never thought about it one day in my life. And, and if you're thinking that way, it might just be maybe a little bit. Just a little bit. And that's why, as soon as you told me that when women give gifts to you, that's why I saw it. Because to you, the gift means that they have an upper hand. No matter what my wife gives me, I can give her triple. Quadruple. So it makes no difference. Anyway, when she gives me, it's a fraction of what I do. So those are my thoughts for you. Yeah. Sorry, sir. Yeah. Um, it's not about the price of the gift. Yeah. It's the meaning. It's not about the price. It's the meaning. It's, it's for you, it's the meaning. The reason why it doesn't mean anything to me, even when I give me 10 million, because I can, it's just a gift. It's what it is. I can do more, which month than her. That's it. It's never, listen to me. It's never what happens. It's the meaning you attach to it. Thank you. But I think, I think you will need to sit down and get some, you yeah. Yeah. It's the kind of environment I expose myself to. Yeah. Where I expose myself to. I think that is one important thing I need. I really need to work on. Okay. Thank you. Amen. Yeah. One last person. Who is desperate? That pastor, you need, I, need, I really need your help. I'm broken. Who is desperate? This lady over here. What is say here, 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 here? But she doesn't even seem desperate. Are you sure that you, you... Yeah. Go ahead. Good afternoon, church. I've been meaning to do this for a very long time, but I don't know how to speak in a crowded place. So this is really something I'm doing for the very first time. So... So, Pastor B, um struggling with keeping communication 
with people. And this started for a very long time. I didn't even know it has a name until when you were stating the signs. That was when I realized that, so this is what my problem has been all this while. So while growing up, it didn't start now. It started way back when I was even in secondary school. I'm 26 years old. I've never seen my mom and my dad together. And I've never really been in a family setting. So I was living with my mom's younger sister. It was not a good experience. I'm one of those children that are dreaded weekend because I have to stay at home. Every Monday, I'm so excited to go to school because that was the only place I found happiness. So I grew up that way. I left home at the age of 17 and came to Lagos all by myself. And it has been that way. I prioritize my work so much. When I say I am a heavy people pleaser, that is what I am. I can literally say yes to you and go home and be crying because that was not what I wanted to do. And it has affected me in a lot of ways. I literally buy my way into people's hearts by gift, anything. I just want them to stay there. And it's made me an overshare. Anytime I get to see someone that just pays attention, I just spit out everything and I'll, I'll just, I'll feel so embarrassed after just, just saying Just hold on one minute. I, I need to see you as you're speaking. I can't see. It's really dark. Just one minute. I'd like to be back in about three to five minutes. Praise God. Yes, please tell, continue, please. So, it's made me, I, I shut down completely. Because even when I was staying with my aunt, she was not treating me well. And when we go home, my mom will listen to my, her sister more than what I'm saying. Who was richer, her sister or your mom? Her sister was richer. So, because I, I'm the youngest. So they kind of distributed us among the family. Mm. So whenever we come home, I'll be like, mommy, this is what is happening, this is happening. My mom will be like, my sister said you have been stubborn, you have been this, you have been this. She doesn't even want to listen to what I'm saying, it's what her sister H says. How did that make you feel? I just got tired of talking and shut that. I just kept everything to Relax. myself. I'm trying to ask you a question. Yeah. You're breathing very fast. And you're breathing very, you're scared. Yeah. Why are you scared? I don't know. Tell me exactly how you feel. Just think about how you feel. So you're scared? Are you upset? No. Are you angry? Or you can't tell me exactly how you feel? I grew up feeling like I am not worth anybody's attention. So, but how do you feel right now? I still feel that way most of the time. Even but though how do you feel right now? I feel like at least for the first time I'm, I'm able to get people's attention. So let me tell you why I'm asking all this question. So one of the things I notice, this is one of the things I notice as we speak. One of the things I notice is this. One of the bad things about poverty is that it takes people through experiences that suppresses their emotion. So, they just can't talk. And let me say something to you. Your mom knows her sister was maltreating you. But the reason why she never spoke was that she doesn't have an option of how else to take care of you. And she had to come up with a story that is not maltreating her for her to be seen. Because the moment she says you're maltreating her, then she has someone to take you to. And what happened to you is that you said something, you were excited to go to school. Anytime you go to the house, your emotions will just freeze. You just become somebody else. Is that not what happens to you? Yes, sir. Just become someone else. So how do you come out of it? This is how you come out of it. Begin to pay attention to yourself. Let me tell you what I noticed. You were angry, but you couldn't tell. You were not scared. You were angry. You were angry and you were bitter. 
Did you hear from her voice? But she couldn't. The reason why you didn't know you were angry with her, you are used to not being aware of your feelings. So you were angry and you're bitter. And the reason why you say you are afraid is because the predominant emotion you felt in your auntie's house was fear. So even right now, when you are not afraid, you still think you are afraid. You were angry, you were bitter, and I intentionally asked you. But the reason why you do not know is because you are not present. You are not present. You are not present. You, you, even when you try to be present, you are not present. And what you need to do is to look at yourself and say, how do I feel right now? Because if you cannot, if you can't know how you feel, you cannot express how you feel. And if you cannot express how you feel, you cannot get the help you need to recover. I love the right, you said, you said, you said I never used to get attention, I'm getting people's attention. Awesome. How do you feel when you, did, when you got that? What is good? You see the challenge? She's not able to absolutely capture her experience in the now. And the reason why is that from when she was young, she was taught to suppress her experiences. She was taught to shut down experiences. She has grown as an adult right now, but in as an but still an emotional baby that cannot express himself. So, how do you get out of this? The first way is I will give you what you should do. Get a notebook or your phone or something. And every hour, just write out how you feel. I actually feel very hungry. I feel very happy. I feel sad. Because from what you've said right now, so you have you have you you live in a lot of fear, yes or no? Tell me, what do you think? That's the reason why I wanted to speak to you because now it's affecting my relationship with people. After a long period of time of trying to please people, at some point I was like, people should just go. Yeah. I kept to myself. Yeah. So, so why did you try to please people? Because of the fear. Remember that she has lived in a long experience of fear. So people that people, persons that people pleasers have a huge history of fear. So how do you deal as a people pleaser? I don't think it's about asking people to go. I think one thing you have to do is be aware of your emotions. The second thing is to prioritize yourself. What did I say? Prioritize, prioritize yourself. Prioritize yourself. Prioritize yourself. That means that I will not make you happy to make me sad. I will make me happy first. You get it? But then they leave. But then they leave. Yes. And what's wrong with that? When they leave, what does that mean to you? I just feel like I've lost them again because this is something that has been happening over and over again. And what is bad in losing people that don't value you? Hmm. What's bad in it? The major problem is that when people live your life, you have an interpretation in your life that everybody that lives your life, gold has left your life. Some people are in your life for a reason. Some people are in your life for a season. Some people are in your life for a lifetime. If they leave, it's only God that heard what they said behind you for them to leave. And some people need to leave your life for good people to come into your life. The Bible says the king Uzziah died. I saw the Lord. Some things have to work out for some things to work in. And there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with them being in your life. And them living your life. You know, let me tell you something. Eh? When people live your life, it's the meaning that you give to it that causes you pain. It's the truth. It's the meaning that you give to it that causes you pain. So you have a fear of people living your life. It's, see, it's okay for the wrong people to leave me. Is it not true? It's okay. I will even do a party when you leave. Why? My trouble is minus one. Today you are my friend. Tomorrow you are my enemy. Stay somewhere. Let thunder strike you. <laughs> ah. If I know my friend, leave so that better people will come inside. Is that not true? 
So the, the thing is that, what's your name again, please? Grace. So Grace, one of the challenges, one of the challenges I see here is that the way you interpret departures is so painful. The way you interpret what departures is so painful. So, and that's why you people please are, because you think everybody that lives your life, something bad has happened. And sometimes the best thing that can happen, can I say something to you? The best way to love your some people is to walk out of their life. Someone say, I've forgiven you. Forgiveness, you can forgive without reconnecting. I've forgiven you, but no more reconnection. I love what that, praise God. Someone say, forgive and forget. I hope you know it's not in the Bible. I hope you know it's not in the Bible. You are shocked. Show me the Bible. The reason why is that I'm not saying you should remember, but once you're forgiven, sometimes it's difficult to forget. Praise God. So, when you want to live your life, it's okay. Say with me, say it's okay for people to live. Say, where's your microphone? It's okay for people to live my it, life. It's even, the, it, it, even the way you're saying it, it's very challenging for me. But don't worry, you'll get there. Is that okay? Just remember that some people have to leave for some people to come. Is that okay? Which camera am I facing? This one or this one? Cameraman, which one? Am I, am I on this camera? This one. Okay. Yeah. Oh, tell me, what's the problem? It's telling me the wrong thing to do. Okay. So, yeah. Some people need to leave for you to get ahead. Thank you. Bless you. Can we stand on our feet and pray? Let's love and pray. Don't be that way. Don't be as if the service is heavy. Femi, how are you? It's nice. I've not seen you since. Praise God. I wanted to pray for grace to heal. I want to pray for grace to heal. I want to pray for grace. Let's go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. And Father, thank you for an opportunity to share your word. I'm asking that you provide healing to everyone in this house. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Were you blessed today? All right. Remember, you can share all of those videos with your friends on YouTube at Harvest's TV. But also, you can also, what they call it, you can also share this. Um, you can share your feedback with me from this service online. That they look at it on, on Twitter. Can you tweet about it? There's been a lot of Twitter feed about this message. Help me retweet it. Tweet about it. Send me your own tweet on, on, on Instagram. Send me a story of how he blessed you. You can have your seat as we bring the service to a close. If today happens to be your first time in Harvesters, well, okay, I'll take the offering first. Thank you for reminding me. If today, we we'll would love to take our offerings. We we'll would love to take our offerings. We we'll would love to take our offerings. Praise God. We we'll love to take our offerings. If you're taking your, if you want to give your tithe, can you stand on your feet as our culture is? If you want to take your tithe, if you want to give your tithe, can you stand on your feet as our culture is? If you're giving your tithe, stand on your feet as our culture is. If you give me your offering, raise up your offering, let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we well, thank you for the opportunity to bring our tithes and offerings to you today. I'm asking you, bless it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And bless all the people that are given in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You can have your seat. Please, next Sunday when you are bringing someone, how many of you know someone that needs this message? You know someone that needs this message. I want everyone to bring two or three people to church next week with them in the fourth service. Fourth service, I want us to be all in the gallery. Is that possible? Exactly. Next, next thing, um, if today happens to be your first time in Harvesters, will you raise up your right hands? Let us welcome you in Jesus' name. My first time in Harvesters, raise up your right hand. Thank you for helping me raise up our hand. Raise up your right hand. Let's welcome you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, my brother in front here. God bless you. God bless you. Choir, are you singing a song as we close? Praise God. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please, there's a brother in front here. Get the cards from the ushers. Fill the cards and return back to the ushers. Thank you and God bless you. Let's stand to our feet and praise the Lord. Shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. Are you ready to give God some praise this? Oh, yeah, let's go. All the 
next level continues tomorrow with Pastor Balaji. Ido, can you just slip one hand? Say, surely, goodness and mercy, greatness and favor, power and anointing, peace and joy will follow me all the days of my life. And I'm the dwelling house of God forever and ever. Amen. Have an amazing week. God bless you.